Hello guys, so in today's tutorial I want to show you how to create a lofting uh, with Grasshopper. Uh, this is uh, an inspiration piece that I found online from uh, Archihub. I actually recommended this uh, this artist a couple of tutorials ago. Uh, great stuff. So in this tutorial we're going to explore and see how uh, to create this type of the geometry. This is going to be just inspiration. We're not gonna recreate the same geometry. I just wanted to show you uh, how you can uh, create these kind of surfaces uh, in Rhino and then how you can create uh, this kind of uh, connections between those surfaces in Grasshopper and how uh, you can manipulate this. So let's get started. So first thing I'm going to create a rectangle here. It's gonna be uh, some something like, let's say this. It doesn't need to be perfect. Then we're gonna say planar surface. Uh, then the next thing is going to be uh, to do the rebuild. Let's do rebuild and let's keep the default here as, um, let's see, yeah, this is gonna be fine, okay. And what this allows us, uh, this allows us to have uh, control points. So for example, if I uh, click on control points, you can see that now I have a multiple, uh, multiple points that I can move around and create very cool surfaces with this. So I'm just going to approximately create some kind of surface that is that uh, is similar to, to that uh, example. And then we're going, we're going to continue. All right, so let's say that this is going to be uh, our first surface. Uh, and then uh, what I can do, I can simply duplicate this and I can rotate it 180. And now I can also flip it, for example, let's flip it also 180. And now we have the reverse surface and we can still uh, play around with it a little bit. So uh, let's turn on the control points and let's create uh, some other type of geometry here. All right, and I'm gonna do 180 once more, and let's say that I'm gonna be ha I'm gonna be happy with uh, with this result. Now at this point, I would just like to create some mass, so I'm gonna simply drag this like this, and on the top to create uh, the geometry. And uh, what we can do, we can say solid points on, and then do set point, and place it uh, something like this. And we can do the same thing with the bottom, but let's let's try something else. Let's simply use this line and extend it like this. And let's do Boolean split. And now I have these two uh, surfaces pretty much. So the next thing is to isolate these two. I'm gonna hold uh, Control and Shift and select them. And I'm gonna say Extract Surfaces. I'm gonna copy them in place and join them Oh, with these guys and then I'm gonna hide this so I just have these two surfaces I'm gonna go to the top and now I'm gonna simply create uh, I will just show you once uh, on one example how you can do it and then uh, you can repli replicate it on your own so I'm gonna create two circles and they're not gonna have the same centers I'm just gonna play around and with the radiuses to see what results uh, that that I can get. So let's see something like this. So this uh, top one can be for the for this guy and this one is for the bottom. So I'm just extruding them and then I'm gonna go with split. I'm gonna slip, split these two surfaces with these two uh, geometries and let's delete the rest. And now uh, I, I have these two openings. So how I can create this loft that it so that it looks nice. So uh, we're gonna go to Grasshopper now, and I'm gonna show you through this simple definition how you can achieve this. So here uh, we just need to pretty much assign these two curves. So I'm gonna hold uh, Control and Shift to select this curve, and I'm gonna say Duplicate Edge, and I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. And now I'm gonna select it. 
and do set one curve here and here also set one curve. And now we have a mess, complete mess here. So why is this happening? Uh, it's actually good that this happens, so let's investigate. So the first thing that comes to mind is let's, let's hide all of this and let's see uh, what's going on. Uh, if you click here on this, uh, on this uh, line, you will see that it has a, lo a lot of controlled points on the bottom as well. So the first thing that uh, may, may happen is that the distribution of this um, curve is not the same as the one on the bottom. But before checking that, let's just try to see uh, what's happening with the geometry. So you can see that it's actually twisting here for some reason. So the first thing that we should check is try to flip one of these uh, curves. So I'm just gonna type flip and see if this will fix the thing. And that's it, easy as that. So we just need to, to flip the curve and now we have the nice uh, nice result here, nice loft. So let's, let's see uh, what's happening with this definition. I'm gonna hide everything and then show you step by step uh, what we did. So the first thing is uh, we used the component called uh, twin through curves uh, and uh, this pretty much gives us, uh, so these initial, let me just hide this again. Uh, this gives us uh, the first curve and then the last curve and then it gives us uh, the all the curves in between. And here we use the factor as a list to, to tell it how many curves we want to be inside. Between, between these two. And then what this component does, it, it pretty much twins them uh, based on their, on their surfaces, on their orientation. So, uh, so that's why we used here uh, the series and we used the remapping of the, mum, of the numbers so that we can get this nice uh, distribution of these curves. So the series component we covered in, in previous tutorials. So uh, let me just show you uh, what we got here. So we got uh, we got the numbers from 0 to uh, 90 in this case. The step here is 10 but this can pretty much be whatever. It can be even 2 for example. Uh, it, will not uh, it will not change uh, anything here but if you change this number, if you put it to let's say 20, then you will get more uh, density of, of, of these curves and then this means that the final result uh, would be a bit uh, a bit smoother as you can see here but uh, let's let's bring it back let's put it to 15 for example or even 10 what it was 10 I think and uh, that's that's enough for now and then and, and then uh, the, the next thing that we did there is uh, we used a remapping of the number of the numbers we use remapping of the numbers so that we can get the results from zero to one based on this inputs here. And uh, then we used the, the graph mapper to give it some transitions. So if you change this position here, you can see that I'm changing this element here. You can see that I'm changing the position. And uh, you can pretty much see the final result that is based on this. So if I move this guy, it will change their shape on the bottom. And if I change this guy on the top, it will also change the one above. So that's how you can control the smoothness near the top. And then these guys are just simply like uh, the the resolution that you will get when you play with it, play around with this. Uh, of course, the more uh, the more uh, curves you get the results will be smoother but then you need to to see and play around with this and see what is the best uh, the best relation that you can that you can have so I found that 10 is enough so we're gonna stick with 10 and uh, then uh, once once we did here can you even see here the distribution of the circles and now uh, the next step of this is to give it some scaling so in order to have the loft, you need to have the curves. And that's what we're doing here. We're, we're saying, okay, I want uh, I want to scale these curves. I want to create this kind of shape and I'm gonna scale them based on, on the graph mapper here. So in order to scale them, I need the centers. 
So uh, if, I, if I just use area component, I cannot get the centers with this because it says that it can only give me the centers of planar closed curves. And these curves are not, uh, not planar. So that's why we used a bounding box. And this pretty much bounds the whole thing. And then I take the volume component and, and I have the centers fr from there. So that's how I get the center of this volume. And now I have these centers and I can scale them up. So this is what I got as a result. I just used this, uh, the same kind of uh, uh, graph mapper. I just connected it here. And I, I, I changed this to parabola. And now when I move these guys, you can see that I'm also changing the, the values here. And uh, as a result of this, I'm getting different, uh, different element here. Final element. So if I move this guy, it will change the uh, the middle point here. And uh, if I change this guy, it will change how steep you want this transition to be, or how wide you want it to be. And now, once I have this, uh, once I ha have this, I have these curves, and now I don't need these guys anymore. So the last thing here is. Uh, to connect all of these guys in one loft. So uh, in order to do this, I'm going to use merge component here. And what merge component does is it uh, gives us the input of all of these guys. So I connected this curve in number one. I connected this result, these guys in the middle in uh, number two. And I connected the bottom curve in number four, but you can also do it number three, doesn't matter. And uh, what this does is, uh, let me show you. Let me just put the graph tree so that you can see the result here and to get a better sense of, of what it is. Okay. So if I just used a loft like this, I'm gonna get a bad result. And why is this the case? It's because as you can see here, I'm getting uh, one reference close curve, then the second one, then all of these guys in the middle. So I'm not getting them in order. So for them to work, they need to be in order like this. So first the top, then the middle, then the bottom. So just like you can see here, the top, the middle, and the bottom. So the way to, uh, to distribute this data in the proper way, I had to use a graph tree so what graph tree does is it gives us, let me show you. It gives us this kind of list. So just like the order in which we apply it here in the merge. So we have this first one, then all the guys in the middle and then, and then uh, this bottom one. So you're probably wondering, okay, but why we need this flatten tree component? Uh, it's because uh, the loft wouldn't work also just with this guy. You see, we don't get results. It's actually lofting one curve on itself. It says here, uh, when, you, when you go over it, it says this component run 12 times, which means that it, it, it run loft 12 times for each one of these guys. And we need them to run for all of them at once. So that's why we use the flattened tree. And that's why uh, we get this result. So this is the flattened tree result. And you can see here the difference in the data. So here we have uh, what we get uh, as a result of from the merge component. This is the flattened tree, which allows us to uh, manipulate this data to this data, and then flattened tree to put all of this in one branch like this. And then uh, once we uh, preview the loft, then we would have the result that we need. So uh, it, it's really important to understand this uh, this data and how you can manipulate this to get the result that you want in the geometry. So I hope that uh, you found this valuable. Uh, now, of course, uh, I'm not gonna do this for the whole thing, but uh, you get the idea, you can pretty much uh, bake this now, bake it, and I have this geometry. And uh, you, can, you can now create, uh, you can create a lot of these guys and uh, play around with this and play around with thicknesses and uh, results that you will get. So this is the final result that I got to play around a little bit with this geometry and this is 
uh, what I came up with. If you like this uh, video, please like and share and comment on the bottom. If you want to see some future tutorials, if you have some suggestions, put them in the comment section below. Let me know if you want to see more of these grasshopper tutorials so that I can uh, create them for you and I can see what, what you guys need the most. Uh, if you're looking for some additional uh, training or a course uh, on Grasshopper and Rhino. I have something called a Rhino for Architects uh, course. If you're interested in this, click on the first link uh, in the description and you will get more information. There you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with me and then we can talk about it and I can tell you everything there. So yeah, thank you again for watching and see you soon.